I am Mark Rudin. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. And we are building the 2.4 meter project. Now I want to take one step back in the process to a moment before I put the skeg on when I was sanding out the hull in preparation for varnish. Now we're using a process called encapsulation, which means you put multiple layers of epoxy over everything, and that's to make sure that no water can get through that epoxy and into the structure of the wood that we're using. Earlier in the summer, when we were at that stage of the construction, a fellow came into the shop and he wanted to hang out for a day and just talk about what it's like to work as a boat builder and to get a little bit of hands-on experience. And so you're gonna see him helping me out for a moment. And I just want to say this is at a time when the risk of COVID in my area was very, very low. The rates of infections were extremely low and the attitudes around wearing masks was different than it might be today. And this fellow and I certainly discussed the need to wear masks, decided that we were going to be safe without them in the way that we were going to work. Now that's not to say that we shouldn't have been wearing masks for the work we were doing on the boat, but we were having a conversation and we did what we could to make sure we could do both those things relatively safely. So we don't need to have any comments about that if you don't mind. Now we're also gonna get into the actual varnishing in this video, and I'll give you a few tips and tricks that I use in my varnishing process. So without further ado, let's get down to work. I typically do a lot of my sanding by hand rather than with the power sander. It's really easy to sand too much. It can be, but I just enjoy, I, I just hate it. <laughs> I hate running a sander. <laughs> Sitting there, <laughs> and you have yeah. a mask on. Exactly, you gotta have a yeah. mask on, you got a vacuum cleaner going, and it's yeah. loud, and it's just <laughs> like it's... Kind of takes the joy of the... It takes a all figures. the joy out of it, yeah. So I tend to do a lot of it by hand. And, it's, and also it's because I'm usually working on small boats that have got a lot of shape to them, like canoes. Yeah. And it, on a typical sander, the, the pads are too stiff to do much on the, the bulk of the shape of the hole. Uh, sorry, say again, the pads are too... They're, they're too stiff, so the sander would work fine down here. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. even bother sanding down here, because I'll probably come at it with the electric sander. Okay, okay. But all these areas work, you're wrapping around a curve. The sander, if you watch it, the pattern it leaves, it leaves like this, touching this tiny little mm -hmm. surface, and that's how you burn through. Yeah, you yeah, really it's fast. going like this, basically. Yeah, And exactly. then you just have a tiny point actually bearing. I just want to look at yours quickly and just see how you, your, yours looks. Yeah, it looks maybe a little more even than mine. Uh, so right over here, do you want, you want this sanded also, I guess, right in this? Uh, you know what? There's going to be so much going on in here, you don't have to get fussy. Yeah. But yeah, doing a quick sand job in this area without worrying about finish is just is useful. Okay. Because I'm going to be doing some gluing on here and we want that surface abraded. Yeah, for okay. the purposes of that. where you get to see the fruits of your labor. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good, eh? <laughs> yeah, it does. It's so satisfying. I feel like it would probably feel better if I was here for the whole process, though, building the boat. <laughs> we got Mason Harrison down here from Williams Lake, just coming to help out for the day. A much appreciated bit of help, too. You showed up right at the perfect moment. 
just in time for the sanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the fairing would have been an even better moment because that's even worse than this, but <laughs> <laughs> still, you did a great job. I'd put you on the job anytime if you're down this way. Oh, awesome. Yeah. You passed. You passed the <laughs> test. Oh, great. <laughs> Well, I guess sanding is a, probably a relatively easy test to pass. No, it, no, it's an easy test to fail. Oh, right. <laughs> that right? That's why you start. That's why you start someone on sanding. Yeah. They screw that up. You, you don't want them around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You can't sand. You can't yeah. do anything else. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's very, very true. Well, part of it is, you know, do you, can the person adopt the technique you you demonstrate to them quickly? Yeah. And then, do they move it? A pace that is relative to the one that you laid out and if they're if they've moved twice as far as you have in the same amount of time then they're not taking enough time yeah <laughs> and if they're going half the speed they're probably hanging around too long and making a mess out of something <laughs> pulling yeah <laughs> pulling the old instrument maker yeah without the experience it's, you come back and you find a big hole on the side of your boat where they went to town <laughs> sanding the hell out of a six inch yeah i guess you're putting a little bit of square. trust in uh, <laughs> yeah a random guy showing up at your shop hey eh? well yeah so I, I asked jason romero if he ever entertained any apprenticeship um or or even just internship opportunities and yeah. I, was, I was almost hesitant to ask him because it's exactly that there's there's so few jobs sometimes Especially as the craft gets finer, where you can, where you trust sticking any old joker that walks in the door. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you have to watch him like a hawk. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I've got our skag all ferret out, and um, I've had to come back at it with a little bit of bondo here and there to fill in a couple smaller spots. And now we're moving on to painting a waterline on. And there's a reason why I want to do that now, and that's because at the moment. The mold here is level and um, plumb, and everything about it is uh, controlled. So what I want to do is get a nice level line on here now while I can, and I want to get the varnish started. And part of that is just the sooner I get going on varnish, uh, the sooner that the whole finishing process will be done in the, in the end. So it doesn't hurt to just get rolling on it. There's no reason for me to not do it. Now I could just varnish um, up past my general water line, but once those boats flipped over, I'd like to have a reference. So I've taped off the water line so that at least when I do flip it over, I'll have that tape edge that will help to guide me for laying out that water line again later on when we go to paint the bottom. I'm going to use the back of my bandsaw to support my level because this level's magnetic. This is like a really easy, convenient thing for me to mount it on while I dial it in. So there you can see it on the side of the hull. I'm going to bring it down until I meet my tape line or my reference line that I had on the keel. I'm going to be using this special painter's tape that Scotch makes and uh, it's number 218. It, it's beautiful stuff. It's plasticky and uh, it holds an edge really, really well. So I'm just going to start with it. Now there's a this thing takes a hard turn here, so I'm just going to come back and deal with that later. For now, I'm just going to worry about getting this started, and I just want to touch the tape where the la just at the top edge of the laser line around the, the first little bit. I'm going to be just touching it with my finger for a moment, but then to get a really nice clean line where it flattens out, I'm going to do this and just. Stretch out a nice long piece of tape and then carefully drag it along the hull and drop it down into place ever so slowly. And that is how you get a fair line. If you go along here and try and touch it every few inches, it's just going to end up with a big lumpy mess. So this is your, your best way to try and get a fair line. Even, there, even right there where I touched it a bit hard, it suddenly it's not giving me the same quality of line I had a second ago. The only time I'm touching it is just to make sure it's not, as I'm coming around the shape, I want to make sure that it's grabbing properly. And the hardest part is right here at the bow, where it gets, starts to take a turn and the laser becomes quite faded. So I've got to kind of eyeball it 
And I've got my other tape on the back side to compare it to. So there we go. I'll just make sure that looks good before I trim it. it looks pretty nice, I think. Now this is not um, necessarily the, my only chance at doing this, so when we go and paint the bottom, I'll be able to reline this out, and if I don't like how it looks, I can I can change that a bit. But for the most part, this will give me a good working point. And usually, when we do a water line, we actually want it to rise up a little bit at the ends. So we have not done that here in this case, obviously. We just run it flat. Um, but this is kind of an odd boat to do this with. So right now I know the load water line is supposed to zero out at a very specific point. Then uh, we have a switch from paint to varnish. Um, I might just raise it up so that this line zeroes out at the end of the skeg. And that's going to change the shape of the laser on here. I'm gonna, I'll tape this out and then we'll have a look at it. Just for comparison. So again I'm using sort of a specialty tape that's made for taping out curved lines like this. It does quite a nice job and then from here to here I'm just going to be using the transition from skeg to hull as my, as my finished surface so I'm not going to bother with taping that off. I'll just throw another line on here just to make this a bit wider. In reality it matters absolutely not whether or not I get brush strokes over here and uh, a lot of the time if I'm doing this sort of thing I might even be inclined to just varnish the whole bottom of the boat because that's getting me some base coats on there that I can use I can put paint over later. But I'm not doing that this time specifically because I just want this waterline marked. Now let's just have a look if I were to essentially raise that water line. Now of course we're going down because the boat's upside down. Even, even if you wanted to have a boot top, which is what we would call the, the stripe between the top and the bottom. We have what would be the equivalent of about a fat one inch boot top right now. And I'm going to turn off the light so you can see the laser. Here, up here is where my first line is, and uh, here is where my second line is. And you can see we have this massive swath of um, material that just goes whoop before it becomes a little skinny boot top line. And so when you have water lines that come very close to a portion of the hull that has a horizontal plane like this, you're going to get these really massive lines. And if you're to try and make this a straight line with a regular boot top. It would just kind of look silly a lot of the time. So it's something to be conscious of. It would look if I tried to make it a straight line all the way around it would just look like it droops like crazy. What I'm even inclined to do is actually have this water line go from where we laid it off before and actually just I might even just stretch it right out till I hit that point and that's in, in profile that's just going to make it look like it sweeps up a little bit and that might actually look really good. Something like that. So you can see how wide this line would be right in here if I were to use a level line right out to that skeg. And then here's the line we've created just now. The big difference here, and so a happy medium might be, even if I wanted to do a boot top, was to stretch it out. So just bring this out, say, to here, and then bring the next one out and sweep it around out to here as well. And we'll get rid of this. Now the rest of my hull is already wiped down and it's dusted off and I'm ready to apply some varnish. I'm just going to rub down my tape line here carefully. What I like to do is use a thumbnail or a fingernail and just just along the edge that the paint's going to run. Don't do the whole thing because I don't need to. don't need to make myself a whole bunch of work trying to get that tape off. If this were already varnished and I were taping off for a painted bottom right now and I want to get a really clean result. Obviously the top edge would be the part we rub down but the first thing I would do is take some varnish 
and go over this whole thing and give it the initial coat with varnish. Let that set up. Then you do your colored coat over top. And what that's going to do is that's going to seal that edge. So when you peel that tape off, you're not going to see those little tiny nubbles of, of paint bleeding underneath every now and then because the varnish is going to do that job. And you'll have varnish on varnish and uh, so it'll be a really nice, clean, crisp line. And once the paint's over top of that, it'll be fine. We're going to get our first coat of varnish on this. So it's ready to roll. It's all dusted off. Now, I guess the one question is, where do you start and where do you stop? And while we have any standing back here, and it might be tempting to start right back here in this large, broad area, it's not the best decision. We want to try and end our course of varnish someplace where it will fair in to, the, to where we started easily. And this would be a bad spot, even though it'd be uh, a good spot in that you never really, this is always going to be upside down and you're not seeing it so well. We've got a better spot, which is right along the stem. This is just a long area to try and create a nice, clean, straight line. You could certainly do it, but it's not as effective as starting at the bow. Up here at the bow, we have a nice short line that we can use as a starting point for our varnish. And to make it even a little more crisp, it's not really necessary, but we could just add a piece of tape here and um, we could just start working from that tape and work our way down. Now I, as a general rule, like to work from right to left. And that's just because the uh, physical way I like to brush things out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tape on here and I'm gonna start varnishing on this side of the boat. Just like that. Now a lot of people like rolling and tipping. Personally, I'm just a brush man. Simple brush is fine by me. Okay, here's my basic setup for varnishing. Uh, I happen to be using a brand new badger hair brush. I don't usually uh, give myself such a luxury, but um, all my other brushes are not in such great shape. I like to use fine paint filters, ones that are intended for spraying. I always have a clean rag on hand. I use deodorized mineral spirits, which I buy from uh, artist supplies just for thinning paint. I don't use that for cleaning brushes or anything, but for thinning paint I do. And that's just to keep the smell down in the workshop. And then I use milk containers with a stick put through them um, to, for, as my paint pot. And what I like about these is they're just the right size for brushes. For, and um, when you dip your paint, you've got something to tip your brush off against that will allow that paint to drip back into the can so you're not tipping it off against the sides of the can. And I like the square configuration. It just feels comfortable in my hand and um, it, you know, it feels sturdy when I put it down. It's not going to get knocked over easily. And I'll get quite a bit of use out of one of these before I deem it to crud it up to use anymore. So the varnish we're going to use is Le Tonque Noir. This is a um, this is a French made varnish. It's a traditional varnish. Really good quality stuff. And um, my customer likes using it. He's got another boat that he's got it on and it's been holding up really well. And because it's a traditional varnish, it's actually really easy to recoat. It doesn't require uh, a vast amount of sanding um, like polyurethanes tend to. So I'm just taking a guess as to how much I'm going to need. Probably about half of this pot filled, maybe a bit less. That feels about right. And so I have a simple trick for figuring out whether or not I've got the right consistency. And it's something that's really hard to explain. And I'll see if I can what I can do to show you. So if I take my brush here, and I'm just going to get it loaded up first. So when I take my brush and I rub it up against this stick here to tip it out, what I want to see is I want to see that varnish curtaining off it very quickly and falling. Just watch that little flash of light. If it sort of hangs there for a little while, it's too thick. And if it suddenly just falls away very quickly, we're right. So this stuff happens to be a really great brushing consistency. Look at that right there. It's perfect. See how quickly that falls? That's just right on the money. So I don't need to thin that at all. 
If I were using something like Epiphanes, which is an excellent varnish, Epiphanes is very thick and um, you definitely have to thin the varnish in order to use it on anything but a dead flat surface. So let's go and get started on the boat here. So I have a very simple method. I just like to lay it on. I don't worry about grain direction or anything and then I tip it off usually in line with the planking. Now this planking is running diagonally so that's a bit of a, an oddball for me. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. I'm not sure if I want to run it with the planking. I could try that. The strong back's kind of in my way here. But the secret is to uh, get on just enough to load the surface without any dry spots, which we call holidays. And holidays can be really hard to spot. You've got to get right down low sometimes. There we go. Tip it out. And in theory, if you've got a good varnish that has good flow out properties, then your brush direction shouldn't matter at all. When I'm dipping my brush, I only dip it about maybe a quarter inch or a half inch into the paint. I tip it off a little bit. Usually just tip it off on the one side because I do need paint on there or varnish on there. And then I lay it on and then do my tip out. I got a little extra varnish on me now because I just demonstrated that. And I got a little holiday here. You can't see it, but I can see it and a couple more over there so it's you got to get right down low into the raking light to spot those guys and then the golden rule of course is don't overwork your varnish I try and work in these small sections that are maybe I don't know 16 inches wide 18 inches wide something like that sort of because one arm span covers you only so far, right? And so I try and think about how much can I cover in one comfortable sweep with my arm, like so. I just go back, and it doesn't matter if I want to go this way, the direction that I lay it on is totally irrelevant, because it's all about tipping it out. I just want to try and make sure I've got an even coat over the whole surface, not have it too heavy near the top, right? So and drag some of that down, but then we tip it out. Checking for holidays as we go. Don't want to find holidays that I did back there after it started to flow out because when you go back to try and touch them up, the chances that you're going to do that successfully are very low. And I've got this bottom edge that I really don't even need to worry about um, because my shear line actually lands about two inches above that, roughly. Anytime you see me get down low, it's because I'm trying to look into the raking light. I'm going back and forth over it like I'm doing right here. That's not overworking it. Um, because I'm trying to make sure that there are no holidays and I'm telling you, you can lay a, you can lay a brush stroke on there that looks thick as can be and uh, think there's no chance you got holidays and then you get into raking light and suddenly, sure enough, there they are. So that's just to make sure I've really worked that surface. But you don't do it over a long period of time and they say don't overwork it. That just kind of means um, you're, you're battling the amount of time the varnish takes to level out and once it starts that level out process, then it's starting to set up just a little bit. And if you go back and overwork it, that's when you're gonna leave brush strokes. So you have this sort of short window of opportunity. And for instance, like right here, the brush strokes are already mellowing out. And as I look back, it's hard to see in the camera, but back there, my brush strokes have largely disappeared.
I keep the paint filter kicking around and if I have any leftover varnish it goes back into the can but it gets filtered on its way. After this a few more coats of varnish will go on. At the time I shot this it was summertime. I could open the doors and I had work to do outside of the shop so it's a perfect opportunity to just lay on coats of varnish as a base coat. Next we'll flip that hull over and we'll get working on the interior and we'll return to varnishing at the end of the project. I hope those varnishing tips were useful to you. These videos are supported by my followers on Patreon. If you can help us out over there, I really appreciate that. You can find links in the description or up in the corner. Don't forget, you can also subscribe and like and watch some of my other videos and that helps me out too. And I appreciate all of it. Ciao for now, folks. I'll see you later.